John 12, starting in verse 42. Um, so first it talks about how people didn't believe Jesus um, because they were blinded. But then verse 42 says, Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him. But for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. So despite all that was going on, the, the blindness of the Jews... There were not just some, but there were a lot of authorities who believed in Jesus. And so you might hear that and think like, man, how amazing of an impact could they have made, right? They could have, they could have taught the whole nation about who Jesus was and how they had gone astray. Um, but that's not what they do, unfortunately. They don't do any of that. These men are too scared about what might happen to them. Uh, they're, they're, they're afraid that they might that they would not be allowed into their places of worship. They would lose their friends. They would lose their power. They would lose their position uh, in a place that they had worked decades to get up to. So giving up the pow up power and position that they had was too much for them. They, they looked at following Jesus. They looked at what they had to lose. And even though they believed that what Jesus said was true, they didn't believe that it was worth following not at least at that cost. And like, let's be sympathetic here. Uh, if you grew up in a culture where being a religious leader was one of the most important and respected positions that you could possibly have, and you worked your majority of your life to get up to the position, would you easily give that up and admit that you, what you had worked your entire life for wasn't actually the most important? Or these aren't young men. These are the well-seasoned vets who have ro risen up, the, the cream of the crop, if they throw all that away, it's not like they have a whole lot of time to do something else. Like, for in our context, imagine you're a farmer, you've worked your whole life to build up a farm. Let's say you're in your 50s, you have a good amount of land, you have good equipment. How hard it would, it, would it be to just say, now yeah, I'll just walk away from that, Right? You don't get to sell what you have. How hard would it be to just leave it all to someone and go and do your own thing? Let's say be an organic crop scientist. Right? Your reputation would be gone. Your all Everything that you had built up would be gone. Your source of income would be gone. Uh, but the heart, that's a similar risk that, that the Pharisees, that these leaders would have taken. But the heart of the decision is, do you trust God and want his approval or not? Are you going to try and ride the fence and say, I believe in Jesus, but I'm not willing to change anything about my life, or at least nothing that matters? Right? These, these leaders may have secretly given Jesus some money. They, may, they probably showed up to a lot of his sermons and listened to them and thought, man, this, this is a, he's a really good preacher. He's got a lot of good stuff to say. Maybe they even, maybe... Uh, they, they believe the morals, they believe what the Bible taught, uh, but they didn't want to follow him. So for, for us, maybe it would be someone who shows up at church, maybe gives a little money uh, in the offering, uh, maybe appreciates the morals that are taught in the Bible and tries to live by those morals. But outside of that, that's what their walk with God is. Show up at church and be a good person. And their walk with God doesn't actually make a difference outside of the walls of the church. And so for both the Pharisees then and people like that today, Jesus looks at their hearts and sees, you don't genuinely love me. You don't genuinely have faith in me. You have superficial faith, faith that will only commit to Jesus as long as it doesn't interfere with the rest of your life. And for every follower of Jesus, this is a question that we need to answer. Right? Is Jesus worth it. We've heard lots of wonderful testimonies this morning of how, yes, Jesus is worth it. Um, but the question, yeah, is Jesus worth more than the career you have built up? Is Jesus worth more than the respect of your colleagues? Is Jesus worth more than your job? Is there a cutoff to how much you believe that Jesus is worth? Or 
Do you actually trust that God is good and loves you? Or do, deep down, do you think that I need to seek my own good because I don't actually trust that God has my best interest at heart and I don't actually believe that he is enough? Are you like these men who saw Jesus and what it would cost to follow him and thought to themselves, I want to follow Jesus, but not at that price. And let me clarify that this is not that these people, you're not people who genuinely wanted to follow God, but were scared and uncertain of how to do it, right? We have the example of Nicodemus, who's also one of the Pharisees, who at first he goes to Jesus in secret and he's timid. And then the next time we see him, he's in the, the, the high up, group and he stands up for Jesus, but not, not totally. And then the last part place we see him, he's burying Jesus in his tomb after he's died, right? That's a example of someone who started, who's shy, wasn't sure how to do this and then progressed. These are people who just saw Jesus. Yeah. I think he's telling the truth. Are you going to do anything about it? Mm, nah, I'm going to be okay with staying at superficial faith. Um, so let's continue to read verses 44 to the end. Jesus cried out and said, whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to the world to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me does not receive my words, uh, has a judge. The words that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. So Jesus here clarifies, everything I do is because the Father has told me, this is what you are to be doing, this is what you are to be saying. Um, <clears throat> Jesus came to the earth to give us good news. Jesus didn't come to the earth to just say, you are terrible people, you're going to hell, see you later. Right? He came to give us good news, to, to tell us the, the news of how we can be saved. And Jesus didn't shy away, though, from being honest with people, but he didn't just leave them as, you are condemned, you are judged, see you later. He came to give people good news. But um, that doesn't mean people won't be condemned either. Jesus came telling people that he was going to save them, but people were also free to reject them. And people today, the same, are also free to believe in Jesus and follow his words or to reject them. And then at the end of time, we see elsewhere that Jesus is the judge and the words that Jesus spoke themselves will condemn people. It's like when I give my kids a clear guideline and I say, uh, if you eat your supper, then you can have dessert. If you don't eat your supper, no dessert. And then my kids are free to choose. Will I eat my supper or will I not? But at dessert time, if they haven't finished their supper and they get no dessert, I'm not the bad guy. You made that choice. You chose to not have dessert, not me. My, the words that I spoke to you at supper time now condemn you at dessert time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... And yeah, so for the people at the end of the time, the words that they hear from Jesus, that they, they hear them and they chose to reject Jesus. It was their own choice and it's no different for the people today. If we just have superficial belief in Jesus, not genuine, and if our, our faith is not something that transforms our hearts, then Jesus' words of life will actually condemn us at the end of time. So let me just reread verses 49 and 50. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. So Jesus re reiterates that the Father is the one commanding him in everything that he says and does. 
So every word and action is directly from God the Father. And these commandments are, are from God, our eternal life. So what, what is that exactly does Jesus mean by this? Uh, I think there's a couple, two ways that we can take this. First is that the Father is telling Jesus everything to do. And Jesus' actions will lead to him uh, purchasing eternal life for all who believe. And so everyone who puts their faith in Jesus, like we've seen today and heard about, will have eternal life and get to experience the joy of having eternal life with Jesus. The other way um, is that right, the Holy Spirit still lives inside of us today. We also have God's word uh, in the Bible that we can read his, the words of eternal life. And so for us who follow Jesus today, we now get to experience the life that God brings as we hear God's word, as we follow them and obey them, right? God didn't just give us eternal life starting when you die. God came to bring us eternal life starting when you believe in him. And we get to experience the joy and life that he brings now and then forevermore, always getting more and more amazing, which is so exciting to hear. Um, but I want to encourage us as Christians, right? We don't just obey the Bible just out of a sense of duty. We obey the Bible because we believe, or not just the Bible, we obey God because we believe that he is worth it because we believe that he is good and we believe that he is the source of eternal life that we get to uh, enjoy and grow and get to know more and more as we live in him. And that is an amazing thing that we get to do. Uh, Jesus tells a parable, uh, Al read that earlier, of a man who finds a treasure in a field. He goes, he finds it, buries it, and then he goes and sells absolutely everything he has. Everything you have is a huge cost, but he does that because he believes that that treasure is worth way more than anything that he could possibly give up. And so he goes and gladly sells what he has because this is worth it. And that's what our walk with God is. We will have to give up things. We will not get to do some things that we would uh, elsewise have liked to, but we get something way better. And not just after we die, we get relationship with God now, and we get to spend eternity with God in heaven after that, which is absolutely incredible. Um, now, none of us perfectly follows Jesus. We wrestle with sin. But even when you sin, right, do you come back to the reality that Jesus is worth it and run back to him? Do you run back to the one who gives you life and forgiveness and freedom? So I want to encourage you this morning that if you are a follower of Jesus, to keep following the one who gives you life forever. Enjoy obeying his commands. And when you stray, like, just come back. Come back to the one who gives you life and enjoy walking deeper and living in his commands. And if you don't believe in Jesus this morning, uh, I want you to hear this invitation. Right? Jesus came to save you and bring you life. If you recognize that you are a sinner, that you have done wrong, and that you are tired of going your own way, if you realize that you need forgiveness for everything that you've done and, and desire to know and walk with God, then believe that Jesus died on the cross paying for your sins, for every single one of your sins, and you will be saved. And you, and it's not just uh, you believe this, you think it, and you can for, you forget it, right? Believing in Jesus means that you can enjoy walking with God and trusting Him as your Maker. You can enjoy and experience the freedom that comes from walking with God today, as we have heard the testimony of of people already. Uh, I pray that you would, and if you want to talk about that or anything else uh, that we've talked about this morning. I want to invite you to talk with me or, or another Christian. Um, yeah.
If you would like prayer or you have any questions about anything, we also have people in the prayer room up, uh, up the stairs back by the office that would love to pray for you. And then uh, right away, we're going to be taking up the benevolent offering. So this offering is for to meet uh, the immediate needs of people in our church and in our community. And so if you would like to give to that, um, we would appreciate that. But with that being said, uh, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to pr- play our closing, closing song. God, I thank you for how amazing and wonderful you are, and I thank you that we get the privilege of knowing you and walking with you and experience the joy that you bring. God, thank you so much. Uh, Lord, I pray that the way that we live would show uh, how you have brought us life. And Lord, for, the, for those who d- don't believe in you, uh, may you draw them to yourself and may you open their eyes and see how uh, incredible you are. Thank you for the goodness that you show us day by day. Amen.